Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Shelby on Safari, a place where we love to combine animals and pop culture. I am Shelby, and I'm a wild animal biologist and also Pokemon trainer. In fact, today I was out and about exploring the latest game in Pokemon Go, well, the latest game, the latest event, a slow discovery, and here I am off to a slow start. In today's video, we are going to be going through what exactly happens in a slow discovery, what kind of Pokemon you can expect to see, some field research tasks that you need to look out for, and then we'll talk a bit more about one slow Pokemon that you might encounter during this event, Slakoff and then talking about its real-life animal counterpart, the sloth, and discovering why, in fact, they go so slow. Oh, my gosh. Hello, Kai, and welcome. Yes, slow folks, we're going to be discussing about them because there are some fascinating things about those Pokemon. In fact, that was my very first animal and pulp culture comparison video way back when, uh, almost a year ago, about wonderful animal that is Slowpoke and Shelter. And um, <laughs> my glamorous assistant just dropped off a friend with me because in the Shelby and Safari studio, I have one of my friends, Utah, that hangs out with me. Um, so Utah, you just gonna hang there? Yeah, I'll, I'll let Utah hang out. And when Utah comes over my way, I'll just pop him in his little home. But I hope you guys are all well. It's been a while since I've done a live stream. It's always fun and exciting to be able to chat with you. So if you are watching, um, like Kaim did, just let me know in the comments, say, hey, what's up? Because I'd like to know you're here. And also let me know if you've been able to get any shinies because I have not had any luck. I've yet to get a shiny Slowpoke. And I'm really looking forward to getting one. So uh, yeah, let me remind you friends before we begin of all the socials because don't want you to miss out on live streams because it's always fun to be able to interact with you guys and hear from you. So if you're not already, do be sure to check out my socials, which you can see right over here. There we go. That was weird because it's that way for me, but that way for you. Yes. So I'm over on Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse, Twitter. I, I don't really use Twitter much, but it's there. Uh, but more active and not on Instagram. Lots of pictures and videos of my friends. In fact, today's World Oceans Day. And so I celebrated by picking up some litter, some rubbish, some trash, whatever you call it, that was around me to help make sure it doesn't get to the ocean as much as I did want to go do a beach cleanup. Didn't quite have uh, the chance to get down to the sea today, but making sure the area around me is nice and clean was always pretty cool. It was surprising how much trash there was and quite disgusting. But uh, yeah, so World Ocean Day. Oh, here comes Utah. Hello, friend. There we go. Yeah, so as much as people might be like, ooh, tortoises are so slow, they're not really. They were very fast today out in the garden. We had a good um, garden time today because it was actually sunny here. They can move quite quick, the horse field tortoises. So shameless plug as well for another video in case you missed it. Uh, we recently got an amazing outdoor enclosure built out for our friends, which you can see in the description down below. Um, but yeah, that's where Utah was hanging out today. Uh, Utah, did you want to say hi? Utah says hi. Uh, now he's going to go back to his little house. There we go. His indoor house, because we don't keep him outside overnight. So yeah, there we are. So let's get started into what exactly is happening on, happening, happening on the live of um, a very slow discovery. So it just started today, and I'm going to try to change the slide, and it's not going to change, is it? No, it's not. So I'm going to change it. So... This is what a slow discovery is all about. The amazing, the incredible Galarian Slowpoke. Now, Kaim, I'd like to see if you actually were able to find one yet, because I haven't. Um, and there's a good reason, because they're not appearing in the wild, I don't think. When I was looking it up on Leak Duck, which I love to use, because I do love a good bit of graphics. Um, alas, I didn't see Galarian Slowpoke available in the wild. It's only available in two field research quest. Oh, you did get one. Oh, that's fabulous. Have you evolved it yet? Because it is a little tricky to get to evolve it because you have to use good old, you have to have it as your buddy and catch poison types, which I don't see many poison types around me. Uh, no shiny though. Yeah, there's only shiny regular slow poke, canto poke, Canto poke, <laughs> Canto poke uh, available. I don't think they've quite released. They like to keep us waiting, don't they, for the shiny versions of the new Pokemon. I'm still waiting for shiny Oshawott. Come on, get with it, Pokemon Go. But uh, yeah, so you have, uh, as it is said, a wild, wild discovery. Oh, you already have both evolutions and you're level 40. Well done, matey, well done. 
Sounds really good, really quick of you. I'm quite jealous. Uh, but yeah, so with a very slow discovery, there are wild spawns of a lot of slower type Pokemon, ones who like to take it in the slow lane. So like Psyduck, Slowpoke, Slowbro is in the wild. So that's really good to get your XL candy to really boost up the combat power of your friends. Uh, uh, Slackoth, Vigoroth, which was interesting to see a wild Vigoroth, Grimer, and Gulpin, and I think, I feel, feel like I'm forgetting one more. Oh, the birthday girl has decided to join us. Happy birthday, Alice. I hope you're enjoying good pizza. Um, yes, everybody in the chat, if you're in the chat, be sure to wish Alice a happy birthday. She's joining us today, which is part of the reason why I'm doing Slowpoke. Well, not Slowpoke, but um, Slackoth and Sloths, because I know Alice loves Sloths. So it just so happened, coincident, with the very slow discovery. Uh, so I don't know, Kayim, if you've got Mega Slowbro yet, because you mentioned you got your Slowpokes and you got the evolutions, but have you gotten Mega Slowpoke or Mega Slowbro? Because it has debuted today. I've only been able to get into one raid. Hopefully tomorrow I'll get a few others. Mega Slowbro is quite the interesting looking friend. Let's see if I can pull up. There we are. Look at him. He's so cute. Um, and again, yeah, throwback to the Shelter and Slowpoke uh, episode that I did a while ago, you can see that <laughs> poor Shelter is used like a weird body of armor for Mega Slowbro. It's so funny. Yeah, funny you say you haven't seen any raids. I didn't either. I was invited to one remotely. So yeah, it's quite, well, I'll keep my eyes peeled for, um, for Slowbro raids because yeah, it, I definitely want one. They're so cute. So funny looking. Now there is a collection challenge that is going on. If you get all the evolutions and Kayam, I know you said you got them and you hopefully have got Mega, or not Mega Slowbro, um, Galarian Slowpoke. You can get a cool couple of items. You can get a couple XP, which is always nice, especially, you know, trying to move your rank up, uh, you know, from level 40, like you said, I'm 43 at the moment. I just got to it. It's been a long slog, but you also get some ultra balls and a cool t-shirt as well for your avatar with Slowpoke on it. So be sure to try to do that collection channel uh, challenge, but it sounds like you're well on your way with that one. So well done. Now, the important part, if there's one thing for you friends to take away with regards to Pokemon Go's a slow discovery, it is the two field research task that are worth just going into a town center if you can safely and spinning the Pokestomps to try to find either win a raid in under 60 seconds or evolve three slow poke because rumor has it those are the two field research tasks that you need to be able to have an encounter with Galarian Slowpoke, the new Pokemon that's been released in Pokemon Go's new game, A Very Slow Discovery, which is taking place already it started this morning until 8 p.m. Sunday, this Sunday, local time. Oh, Rita's here. Ah, yes. Happy, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> oh, that's awkward. Rita, yeah, it's happy birthday, Alice, not Susan. You guys are very silly. It's nice to see the gang is here. So, yes. So, that was a brief introduction into a slow discovery, the event that's happening in Pokemon Go. And the reason why we're doing this live stream is to talk about it. It was nice to see, Kaim, you got lots of stuff already. It's been going on less than 24 hours and you're already ahead of the game. Uh, I still have a lot of catching up to do. And uh, I want to talk about some slow Pokemon and some slow animals in real life to celebrate this uh, wonderful, wonderful day that happens to be my buddy Alice's birthday. So let's talk about slow Pokemon, shall we? Uh, let's, you don't need to see those again. There we go. I'm a professional. <laughs> I can answer this. Look at that wonderful Pokemon. He looks so derpy. I love it. That is Slackoth. Now, guys, Slackoth <laughs> is obviously based on a sloth. And I had a lot of fun looking through the Pokedex entries about this Pokemon. My goodness, what what a guy, what a guy. Very similar to Gaston. Um, actually, not quite. It, whereas Gaston's working out for many hours a day, Slackoth sleeps for more than 20 hours a day. Sounds like my friend Maui. Uh, but it, apparently because it sleeps so much, it can make people or things who are around it drowsy because it is so sleepy. Um, <laughs> what is derpy? Well, he just has a funny look on his face, doesn't he? Because he's probably he's probably drowsy because he's been sleeping for so long. Do you guys ever find that? Actually, uh, tangent time. I guess it's not really a tangent, but like I find if I take a nap in the middle of the day and you know, the expression cat nap, take a cat nap, depending when I take it, if I take it at the wrong time, I wake up and I feel more tired 
Whereas I know the point of taking a nap is to try to help you feel refreshed. Yeah, that doesn't happen with me. Um, yeah, let me know. Please let me know if you feel the same way or do you do you like naps? I mean, can you sleep like slack off for more than 20 hours a day? You know, we ask the tough questions here on Shelby on Safari. Oh, you got a wild Vigoroth today. That is nice. It is a bit scary because uh, for our friends who may not know, Vigoroth, uh, like the name might suggest, he's a bit more active <laughs> than Slackoth or Slackoth just is like floppy. Actually, let's see if I have a picture of floppy Sackcloth. There we go. That's what Slackoth looks like in Pokemon Go, guys. So it's very much asleep. Um, and uh, apparently Slackoth only eats three leaves each day. I wonder how big those leaves are. They must be pretty big or quite small. Ah, uh, you do love a nap, Katie. Ah, uh, that's good. Because, yeah, I I guess sometimes, I, I guess maybe it depends where you're at. Like if you're like at the beach, you know, you, you might be able to have a good nap and then wake up and then you can feel a bit more refreshed hopping in the ocean. Whereas sometimes if you're not, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, <laughs> good. Yeah, you, oh, so all you guys can handle naps. Good. Great. I'm the one out. That's fine. I'm going to have a sip of my elderflower cordial. Actually, hmm. While I do, there's some really cool ice cubes in here that um, the glamorous assistant who brought in Utah, uh, he got out of place uh, near to us that are reusable ice cubes. So we can freeze them and then reuse them, which is really cool, which comes in handy. And so, yeah, with Elderflower Cordial. So cheers, guys. Happy birthday to Alice. Now, where was I? Ah, yes, Slackoth eats only three leaves a day. So you got to make those leaves count. And oddly enough, its heart apparently only beats once a minute. That's quite slow. I don't think I would like that. But that explains why it is so slow, because it doesn't really have a lot of, um, yeah, it has a very slow metabolism, which is great that the creators of the game brought that over. As, as we'll see with sloths, they too have a very slow metabolism. And uh, yeah, don't really expend a lot of energy. They're very good at energy saving for what they need, essential, the essentials, the essential energy to survive. And speaking of being very clever about what they brought over from the real life Pokemon known as a sloth to Slackoth, uh, they did mention in the Pokedex entries that Slackoth can swim. They can swim in rivers and that is very similar to sloths as well, which is quite surprising. Uh, I wonder if you guys know that if <laughs> sloths can be good swimmers, it is a it is a sight to see. So yes, indeed, indeed he did. Well, friends, so we've covered a bit about this uh, slow discovery game uh, in Pokemon Go, this event that's happening over the next few days. We've talked to you a bit about Slack Off, some interesting Pokedex entries, but now it's time for us to move to Slowpoke ever so quickly because that is the star of the Slow Discovery because the Galarian Slowpoke has been released, which is exciting. They have the little yellow. This is a Kanto version that we've all come to know and love since the good old games of Red and Blue. Now, for those who may not know, especially in the anime, they really stress how notoriously dim Slowpoke are. They are very forgetful and uh, a very sad figure that they shared in one of the Pokedex entries was that it can take up to five seconds for Slowpoke to process pain. And it may even take them a day to realize that something has bit their tail. Now, when I say something has bit their tail, it could be anything, but more importantly, probably a shelter, as we've seen in the episodes of obviously how Slowpoke does evolve. It does need the help of Shelter. So yeah, I thought that was quite sad how long it takes. Like I hurt myself and I think I realize it. Actually, you say that. You say that. I say that. The other day I was at work and all of a sudden I realized I was bleeding on my finger. You can't see it because the share screen. But yeah, I could like cut myself there and I was like, oh, well, look, I'm bleeding. So maybe I'm a bit like Slowpoke. Yeah. Oh no, Rita's phone has died. Oh dear, oh dear. Sloth, sloth. I, you, you, you're lucky it's your birthday, Alice. I shall try to say sloth. Yes, that hurts. That actually hurts. Anyway, so slow poke. <laughs> we can see that it takes a while for them to process pain, which is quite disconcerting. Uh, but look how happy they look. They're so sleepy. They like to be by water. They dip their tail in to hopefully get it bit by shelter. Um, oddly enough, their tail can often break off, but will grow back. 
Now, what I found particularly interesting with this is that in the Lola region, which is one of my favorite regions, you can tell because I have my friend, oh, I'm blocking the view, my, my new friend, Alolan Vulpix, which is not a fluffy sheep, uh, which someone got confused it for, but an Alolan Vulpix, so it's an ice type, unlike the fire type, which we know from Kanto, but I love Vulpix and I love Ninetales, so Vulpix is now my mascot. Um, in Alola, apparently, with the slowpoke's tail, with how often they fall out off, people in Alola will take the tails, dry them, and put them in stews. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I guess that doesn't harm the slowpoke, so that's that's nice. But I just thought, what an interesting factoid to just pop into the Pokedex entries. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you guys have um, gone down that rabbit hole of reading some Pokedex entries yourself, but I'll actually put the links to the description down below of some of the web resources that I have that pulls together, you know, the entries from all the games. And sometimes for some of them, they can be really like dark and like, ooh, gosh, like, I don't know, when I was playing the games, I never really paid attention to the Pokedex entries until relatively recently, because now I'm like, oh, they throw in throw in some curveballs with them. So yeah, good old, good old Pokemon creators. Oh, my squirrel Teddy looks cool. Oh, oh, hey Grace, it's Rita on Sean's phone. What is going on? Oh my gosh. Oh, hi Grace. Hi, it's Alice's birthday, so we're having a celebration for her. Um, I'm not quite sure. Your squirrel Teddy looks cool. My squirrel, oh, the Vulpix, yeah. Ow, that was my knee. Squirrel, Squirtle, oh, yeah, Squirtle. Oh, yeah, Squirtle, baby. Can't tell with all this thing. But yeah, Squirtle's up there. He has um his sunglasses on. Let me go get him. Squirtle squad, woo. Yeah, he's so cute. I ha we have um, Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur's back there. JJ Pascal, as we call him. And then there's also Charmander, but Charmander is in the other room. But yeah, I had to put the sunglasses on Squirtle, because why not? Ah, oh, good old Squirtle Squad. Yeah, I have a lot of Pokemon stuff. I'll have to show you guys around again, because I got a few new things relatively recently um, that have fun little Easter eggs. I got, actually, Alice, you'll appreciate this. I am... Um, Went to TK Maxx the other day, and I just was browsing the home section as one does. But guys, look at this. I know, hold on, I'll show you even closer. It's a cheetah with leaves and the teal color and the spots, they got the spots right. That is like one of my biggest pet peeves when they like show just a generic cat and it's like a weird mixture of spottage, like either leopard or jaguar, um, or they say it's cheetah, but it's not cheetah spots but yeah look isn't that exciting I got so excited I was like you're coming home with me I don't actually have anything in it but I'll find something to put in it anyways I was really excited about that I am sure um <laughs> I get excited when I see cheetah stuff because I have a really cool cheetah jug just up there as well stuff you wouldn't know that cheetahs were my favorite animal or Vulpix was my favorite Pokemon would you no. Anyways, I digress. So, friends, we covered the slow discovery Pokemon. I talked about the two field research tasks that you need to keep in mind, which are win a raid in less than 60 seconds, which I find quite ironic given that it's about slow Pokemon, um, and also evolve three slowpoke for your chance to encounter Galarian slowpoke. So Galarian slowpoke is the cute little guy that has the yellow on his forehead, but as you may notice, like my friend Kayam noticed, there are a lot of slow poke, there are a lot of slow bro, there's a lot of slack off and even vigor off about. And so it's really important you guys try to make the most of this because we are having the opportunity now to get a mega slow bro. And so trying to get as many of the evolved forms because you get more candies and even a chance for XL candies is key to really boost up your team. Speaking before I go on, I need to say and ask Kayam if you've had a chance to play in the great league yet because mean Fu is in there it's a rank five reward and i'd be curious to see if you've made your way there yet because yeah I, I i've stopped really playing the great league i probably should pick it back up again but yeah i got mean Fu, and then now i'm kind of over it but i should play because yeah anyways so now we talked about some slow pokemon covered briefly slack off and slow poke and how <laughs> slow they are how Sometimes they're dim and forgetful like our friend Slowpoke here and how it takes 
a long time for them to process pain. Slack off, we saw how long they can sleep for, up to 20 hours a day. They only eat three leaves a day. Um, I also, in the comments, let me know if you were a slack off and you could only eat three leaves a day, what type of leafage would it be? Would it be kale? Would it be spinach? Iceberg lettuce? Let me know. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts, guys, here on Tuesday for Shelby on Safari's live stream. Uh, I, I don't know why I show you guys this, because I know you guys already follow me on Instagram, but I'm going to show you anyways. Uh, yeah, Clubhouse, Facebook, all that stuff. Tag me. Let me know what shinies you get. If you get any shinies before I move on to the real life animals, um, follow me there. Let me know, because I want to see your shinies and celebrate with you. In fact, I was actually listening um, to a podcast today while I was out on my run. And it's really cool. Uh, shout out to the Incense podcast, guys, if you're watching this video. I hope you are. If you are, hi. Um, but I love listening to it because it's like a pub banter chat. Like they're all friends and they chat about stuff. And it was just really funny because they all play Pokemon Go. Um, but what I thought was e exceptionally fun, given the name of the podcast, Incense podcast, they at the start before they record, they put on an incense in their Pokemon Go game and then let you know like, oh, I got a shiny. Like I find that really cute. And so I think maybe one um, one day, one Pokemon Go live stream, maybe we should uh, all do that, put on an incense. And then in the real time, we could see what shinies everybody gets. That'd be really cool. Or maybe a four star. Ooh, okay, so let's see. <laughs> Never thought I'd be asked what leaf I'd prefer if I was a sloth. Yeah, Grace, you know it. We ask, we ask really, really good questions here. Oh, I can show your comment. Oh, this is so exciting. I find something new all the time with this. Oh, that's so cool. Look at it, it's you and it's your face. Oh my God, it's so cool. And that's Ollie. Hi, Ollie. Um, yeah. Sorry, that made my day. <laughs> now be careful, chat, because you're going to pop up and you'll never know if I figure out how to do that again. So let us move on to the real stars of the show. What real life animal? And I have two quiz questions for you guys because I know you all love a quiz. So this is a sloth and sloth or wait, sorry, sloth because the birthday girl requested that I try to say sloth. Um, <laughs> this is a sloth. It's uh, rather adorable. This is a three-toed sloth. Um, now, actually, before I get too far into sloths, you'll see that they are, there's three-toed sloths and two-toed sloths. Now, three-toed, well, two-toed sloths are a bit of a misnomer, kind of, because all sloths, Ooh, that felt better. All sloths have three toes on their hind legs. It's the front limbs, the four limbs, where they either have the two or the three. So this is a three toed, uh, as you can count, uno, dos, tres. Uh, so sloths, they have a very low metabolic rate. They have a very low food intake. So also quite funny how they mention with the cloth only eating three leaves a day. And they have a very low defecation frequency, aka they don't go poo a lot. Uh, here and uh, yeah, are very interesting animals, very interesting mammals to say the least. And so, my quiz question for you: We're going to move on from this cute guy, and we are going to pull up this. Here we go, fancy slide. I feel like I'm a teacher. All right, friends, here we go. <gasps> Darcy's here. Hi, Darcy. Oh, I feel like the sloth embodies my nails. Oh my gosh. Let's see if I can show you. Oh, I can do it again. Yay. Hey, Darcy. Oh, I can't wait to see your nails then. Sloth embodies your nails. Are they green? Because we know like sloths kind of go green. Oh yeah, I did a video on sloths as well. Uh, just cute, fast, cute facts a while ago. I did it for my friend, Sean. I did it hanging upside down from a tree. So I encourage you to check that out and laugh at me because um, <laughs> a lot of blood rushed to rush to my head. Um, but I'm really curious, Darcy, to find out what your nails look like. Is Are they on your Instagram? I hope so. If, if they are on your Instagram, let me know. And then I can uh, sh like share your Instagram so we can all go check it out because I'd like to see. Priestess Darcy, in case you guys were wondering what her Instagram was. Sean says 30 days. Rita says 15. Katie says 15. Oh, just the longest possible. Oh, okay. So you're like a three-toed sloth. I get you. I get you now. Because uh, guys, I, the reason I asked about like the coloration is because Darcy often has some really ridiculously awesome, cool nail art. So I was wondering if like she did like a cool sloth one. Um, 
Although that wouldn't surprise me if you did, because you have gotten some seriously cool nail art in the past. Ah, yeah. So I was asking you a quiz question. Okay. So from eating food, so from start to finish, literally out, out one end, in one end, out the other, how long does it take on average for sloths in general? I'm not going to get species specific here, although we can. That's a whole fun rabbit hole if you're ever late at night, can't fall asleep, I encourage you to check out Google Scholar and read about the some of the sloth research that happens, because they really do research this stuff. And it's fantastic. Um, I had a lot of fun researching this because I was like, Oh, that's really interesting. Anyways, so we got a few guesses here. Excellent. Oh, you have a shiny slack cloth from community day in 2019. Let's see if I can show that. Oh, I can. Oh, I figured it out, guys. Ah, yes, I do too. They're pink which is super cute, isn't it? I love I love shiny slackoth. And then when they get to slacking though, they kind of lose their cool pink coloration. I like it when the shinies are really different um, from the norm. Did you hear that? I was waiting for you to come in and interrupt. You're about 20 minutes late, Maui. Hang on. Come on then. It's Alice's birthday. Come say hi. If you're gonna stand outside the door and wail, you might as well come in. I'm gonna have to close the door again. Sorry, he just wailed and then he just sat there. I don't have any dreamies. I can't give you any dreamies, mate. He made a cameo appearance in the latest Loki episode as well because he had to being like he was almost named Loki. So where were we? How long can a sloth <laughs> eat for? Here we go. We'll get this one through. Talk about a slow discovery. We're slowly getting through this live stream. So 15 days, one day, 30 days, eight hours. That's pretty quick. In fact, it is 30 days, 30 days, my friends. It is 30 days from start to finish for <laughs> an average sloth. How crazy is that? Oh, no who uh rita oh this is confusing both rita and alice speaking on the same same friend but yes who else has the pink slack off i think that was kaim has a pink slack off yeah they're quite cute they're really cute i'll try to pull one up in the meantime so yes so 30 days from start to finish which i find absolutely nuts <laughs> that's a really long time right and uh yeah the process of how they you know find that out they put you know trackers in little isotopes to to track the poo going through. It, it's just nuts. It is worth a read, that is for sure. But in the meantime, I'll put up this cute picture because why not of a cute sloth? Look at the little face. Oh, they're so cute. I love their eyes. Um, I used to work at London Zoo and we had uh, two sloths and they were uh, good at breeding. And so we'd often have little baby sloths every so often. It did take a while because they, they only had one at a time. Um, but oh, they were just so fun to watch. And of course, everybody, when they'd come to the zoo, when it, they'd come to the rainforest bit, they'd always want to see the sloth. And more often than not, as we know, sloths are quite the uh, avid sleeper. <laughs> so you would be like, oh, they're just up there that way. And you could only see their fur. But it was still really exciting because you're like, oh, a sloth. Sorry, my Pokemon Go game is not loading. My internet is absolute rubbish, as you probably could tell, because I probably keep glitching out. So anyways, we are talking about eating food. It takes about 30 days from start to finish to leave the sloth's body, which is pretty crazy. Uh, speaking of leaving the sloth's body, they poo only about once every five days. And they're very specific as well. That's when they'll come down to the ground to defecate. So they're quite picky pooers, if you don't mind me saying so. Um, and yeah, it's very, as we see sloths move quite slow and whatnot. And so it's a very energy expending process and they are very vulnerable when they're closer to the ground, you know, from predators. And so it's, you know, once every so often kind of ordeal. So they too, like our friends, the Slackoth, Slackoth, the Pokemon, um, they have a leafy diet. Now, leafies, leafy greens, we, we eat leafy greens because they're good for us. But, you know, they are part of a healthy, balanced diet uh, for us humans. Being purely leafy diet for our friends, sloths, it's quite poor in nutrients for them. And they don't really get that many calories from leaves. And so they have a very slow metabolic rate um, reflected because of this to deal with their low calorific intake. And so that's why they kind of take things on a slower pace. Um, you're being very noisy over there, Utah. Utah really enjoyed his time outside <laughs> in his enclosure. Um, 
yeah, I got some slow-mo footage as well of the guys out there. I'll have to put that on Instagram later. But um, as I mentioned earlier, there are two, uh, well, I didn't mention it earlier, but there are different this, different species of sloth. We have the two-toed and the three-toed. So this is one of the two-toed sloths. Um, there are actually two living species. Now I say living because sloths have been around for a while. There's, um, I, I think you all know Sid from <laughs> Ice Age. You know, sloths is, uh, have been around. There used to be, you know, giant ground sloths. Oh, now you decide to work. Oh, look it. There's slack off in my neighborhood. Oh, they're so cute. There they are, just sleeping, just chilling. Um, but there are actually two species. We have Hoffman's two-toed sloth and Linnaeus's two-toed sloth. Uh, and eventually, maybe one day, a Shelby's two-toed sloth. Wouldn't that be cool? Have a sloth named after you. Although I don't know if that'd be a compliment. Although I would take it as one because sloths are adorable. And they like to take things on the chill side. So yeah, I'll go with that's adorable. So two-toed sloths are much larger than three-toed sloths. And the reason why, actually, I probably should have said that I'm focusing more on the two-toed sloths are because, as we can see, actually, with slack off, um, although you can't really see it now, they have two toes. Um, <laughs> so that's why I'm going with the two-toed sloth. So they are much larger than the three-toed. They weigh up to about 11 kilograms and they get up to about 80 centimeters in length. So a little bit bigger than our friends, the three-toed sloths. Now, the one of the craziest things because their energy expenditure, I feel like we should go back to one of the very first Shelby on Safari videos. I'm going to get comfy here, is about thermal regulation. So as mammals, we can regulate our own body temperature. That's why we as humans have been able to do some really rad things, you know, and go live in places like the Arctic and live in places that are really hot, live in places that are really cold, because we can adapt accordingly. You know, we're not going to essentially freeze to death. I mean, sometimes I guess that, that is possible, but like we can make up for it, if that makes sense. Like we can regulate in our own body temperature, whether that be, you know, from putting on more clothes or eating more food or eating less food or, you know, spending more time in the ocean, things like that. We as mammals, you know, we are pretty good at regulating our own body temperature. And with sloths, they, well, think about it. They live in a really hot tropical forest in uh, the beautiful part of the world in Central and South America. And it's pretty hot there anyways. So consistently hot. And so it takes a lot of energy for us to be able to regulate our own body temperature. You know, the art of thermoregulation is quite costly to be able to do that. And so the sloths have this amazing ability where they kind of have been like, yeah, I don't need that. We live in beautiful, hot places of the world. We don't need to expend a lot of energy to deal with that. And so that has helped them in the sense where they have kind of given that up to be a bit more chill, if that makes sense. Um, oh, yeah. All oh, Utah. Oh, yes. Yes, Darcy. Yes, your friend Utah. Um, so, yeah. So with that in mind, like our body temperature typically doesn't fluctuate as much. We like to keep it relatively, you know, I think it's 30s. No, six degrees Celsius. I always think in Fahrenheit. So I think it's yeah, I think it's 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas with sloths, their temperature can vary. What? 37 and a half. I stand corrected by uh, Maui. <laughs> Maui's just outside the door. So slots, their temperature can vary by up to about six degrees Celsius. So that's quite the fluctuation compared to us friends. Who is the white fox behind you? That's Vulpix. My Alolan Vulpix. You silly goose. Talk about thermal regulation. Yeah, up in the Arctic, they need a lot of fluffy fur. Although they're in Alola, so it's nice and hot. Although they're on the top of, what is it, Lonnie? Kaila? Lanikai? I want to say Lanikai because that's one of my favorite places on in Hawaii, but I don't think it's Mount Lanikai. But uh, but yeah, they thermoregulate a bit differently with all their fluff. Now, sloths, okay, let's take, for example, actually Utah. Oh, he's in his house. But Utah, you know, he needs to be able to move to regulate his body temperature as a reptile. And so when it's sunny, you know, that helps get his energy up. And that's when he moved quite fast. You know, I showed on Instagram, like just how fast they were moving in the sun. But then when it's colder, you know, they don't move that fast. They need, you know, the heat of the sun to help kind of boost their energy and get moving and grooving. 
And so the sloths, since they've kind of given up their ability of, you know, thermoregulation per se, they rely more on behavioral means to thermoregulate and, and keep their kind of core temperature at a solid temperature, for lack of a better phrase. So what they do in the mornings is they make their way to the top of the canopy, soak up the sun, and then when it gets too hot, they'll move back down into the shade to kind of cool off. So they use kind of, you know, behavioral movement very similar to my friends, the tortoises, even though they're mammals, which is quite crazy. So yeah, I guess that's the thing is that uh, they don't really need to expend the energy to maintain their warm body temperature because they live in a consistently kind of warm temperate environment, which they're quite lucky to do so. Um, and so it's kind of like an energy saving mode. And it makes me think of like <laughs> back home in California, like you could switch on, you know, the AC or whatever it was, you know, to be on energy saving mode. And that's why I think that's almost how I think of it with sloths. They've turned that switch on and be like, cool. All right. I'm in energy saving mode. I don't really need to do much. I need to, you know, just keep calm and eat, <laughs> eat some leaves. So now, now that we've covered some thermoregulation, sorry guys, if it got um, too much, but I do love talking about thermoregulation because it's really interesting how different animal species kind of do it and handle it. And uh, yeah, maybe that will be one to talk about my white fox behind me there, Alice. Um, but yeah, Arctic foxes, they have impressive. And also um, fennec foxes as well because they use their ears to help with thermoregulation. Actually, was that my first live stream? I think it was. Yeah, no, Froki. Froki was the first one because Darcy, you joined me for that one. And Tyler showed up for that one too, which was crazy because it was like two friends coming together. I was like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, we talked about thermoregulation in that one too. So you can see kind of a common theme of one thing that I find super interesting. Because um, yeah, fennec foxes, they're the ones that have the big ears like Fennekin, um, the Pokemon. And so yeah, they use them to kind of dispel heat because they live in the desert. And so, uh, yeah, which I find ironic because Fennekin is a fire type Pokemon. So there's another cute sloth. Here is the next question, friends. Hope you're awake. I'm going to have some elderflower and we're going to talk about neck vertebrae. Yay! Because it's always interesting and always fun to throw a question like this in. Now, whoo, I meant my elderflower cordial quite strong, but it's good. It's so good. I was so excited for the elderflower leaves. Um, elderflower leaves, for the elderflower flowers to finally bloom. Um, they bloomed a bit late this year, so I was sad because I didn't get to have any elderflower cordial on my birthday because uh, the husband makes some really good elderflower cordial. Funny story, though, completely off topic, uh, but I feel it should be mentioned uh, that I can grow and change as a human. Um, I, I really did not like elderflower cordial for a very long time, and then one time he made the unfortunate error of making me try his homemade one. And then uh, the monster has been released and I demand elderflower cordial when I get home. I just love it now. I, I don't know why I didn't like it before. Also Nutella, random tidbit, cause I know Alice, the birthday girl, she loves Nutella. For ages, I didn't really like Nutella until relatively recently. So yeah, interesting. Um, although we use goo, uh, instead of Nutella really nowadays, cause palm oil, um, but goo, GU, they do a really nice, um, hazelnut and chocolate spread. Anyways. So neck vertebrae friends, <laughs> here's a trick question for y'all, or is it a trick question? So how many neck vertebrae do two toed sloths have to put it in perspective? Virtually all mammals have seven neck vertebrae giraffes. Tallest land mammal, they have quite a long neck. They too only have seven neck vertebrae. We have them. But how many do two-toed sloths have? Hmm. Let me know in the comments down below which one you think. Um, I'm glad I told, went off on a tangent while I had this slide up so you guys could read it. Is the answer seven, like virtually other all mammals? Is it 12? That's a lot. Is it five? That's less than seven. Or is it nine? That's nine. Alice loves Nutella. Let's see, once again, if I can do this. Oh, I'm so excited, you guys. You have no idea how excited I am to be able to pull up comments like this. I feel like a real news broadcaster now. I can like pull up real deep comments now. 
Zashane subscriber isn't here, so I could put his comments up on the big screen for you all to see. <clears throat> Sorry, I had something in my throat. So what is it? Seven? Alice says seven? Or is that Rita that says seven? We'll see. All right. Well, friends, it turns out our buddies, the two-toed sloths, do not fall into the same category as virtually all mammals. Turns out they only have five neck vertebrae. And you know what other animal only has five neck vertebrae, which I thought was super random, but super interesting? Manatees. Who knew? Yeah. So manatees and two-toed sloths only have five neck vertebrae. Whereas, please note that I did specify the two-toed sloths. There was a good reason because three-toed sloths have nine neck vertebrae. Crazy, right? Yeah, I know. Only five. I know the poor little guys. Oh, poor little two-toed sloths. Uh, so uh, again, the irony of a slow discovery, the Pokemon Go event that is happening now, starting now Tuesday, June 8th until end of day Sunday, I believe it's 8 p.m. local time. It's all about the slow Pokemon. And so it's no surprise that we're talking about sloths because they are, sloths are the slowest mammals in the world. They move at a mere mile per hour. Oh, it's a good thing I can run faster than that because I don't feel so bad now. Um, but yeah, <laughs> poor sloths, only a mile per hour. And they are so slow that algae actually grows on their fur, which helps them blend into the canopy of the trees, which I find utterly fascinating because they do have a bit of green. In fact, uh, my friend Laura from Laura Cuppage Art did a wonderful draw along on sloths. And uh, yeah, we colored some green into our sloths or sloths, as they're also known, just to reflect this, which is quite impressive. I do love, do love some of the craziness of the animal kingdom. So let's go back to another cute picture of a sloth, shall we? Oh, look at that face. Yes, well, we never, I know, I know. Well, I think that's about it for sloths and slow animals. We covered a lot today, <laughs> friends, of uh, both regards to what animals you'll find animals, what Pokemon you'll find in a slow discovery in Pokemon Go, which runs from anything from Psyduck to Slowpoke to Slowbro, Slackoth, Vigoroth. There's a lot of friends making cameos and a lot of them are shiny, except Galarian Slowpoke isn't available as a shiny yet in the game, which is a bit of a bummer, but at least it's available now. Again, it's available in only two field research tasks, so you need to be able to try to find those as uh, quick as you can because there's a collection challenge, which I've got three of the four. I just need Galarian Slowpoke. Um, those two field research tasks that you need, again, which are super important that you do so you can get Galarian Slowpoke, is win a raid in under 60 seconds or evolve three Slowpoke. So keep your eyes out while you're spinning disc to try to find those two, either of those two in particular. Um, in fact, I think the Evolve 3 Slowpoke one might also, it could either be a Galarian Slowpoke or Mega Slowbro Energy. I can't remember, but I think it was one of those could be both. Um, so do you keep your eyes peeled for that? We also talked about some slow Pokemon like Slackhoth and uh, Slow. I recommend you guys check out all the way for me to suggest this my real life um pokemon counterpart video the one that started it all was actually on Slowpoke and shelter and we talked about the relationship that they have um so it wasn't quite a direct animal comparison like tonight how we did with slackoth and sloats uh in fact we did talk about briefly about some of their similarities about how they quite uh sleep a lot, but their leafy diet as well. You guys shared with me your leaves that you would eat if you were a sloth. Uh, I, I I think I'd probably go with strawberry leaves as well because that sounded quite nice because then maybe I could sneak in a little strawberry every so often. Um, but yeah, it's just impressive the animal kingdom that we have. And I think sloths are fantastic animals and definitely seem like real life Pokemon with their really slow metabolism, how long it takes for food <laughs> to go through their body. You know, the fact that they are so slow, but they are actually really good swimmers as well. There are just so many interesting things in the little ecosystems that they support on their bodies by growing algae. It is so cool. And uh, I think, you know, Slackoth, 
um, Vigoroth and Slacking, you know, they were all very interesting additions to the Pokemon world. And uh, yeah, although Slack King isn't really useful in battles because he's just kind of lazy, he is a good bulky defensive Pokemon to put with high combat power that I put at gym. So if I know I'm not really going to be around the gym that often, I put my bulky Slack King there that I got way back when on the community day ages ago. I think it was in 2019. And uh, yeah, I leave him there to defend, defend the gym. But uh, yeah, I'm... Keen to see what you guys get. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's about it for tonight. If you guys have any questions, you know, just drop me a line. Um, if there are any Pokemon that you want to see in upcoming counterpart or live streams, you know, my I think my buddy Grace and I are long overdue for another Who's That Pokemon live stream. I would love to do another one with her. Again, just because that's a lot of fun and being able to see what kind of crazy cool makeup grace does to reflect some of the amazing pokemon in the world that's always fun to, and to see you guys try to guess too it always always is amusing oh good cutting you put your slacking in gyms as well yeah it's just so nifty a uh, uh, nifty of a trick and yeah because he does look so bulky although i say that and recently i alternate sometimes between putting like the really heavy combat powered level pokemon or a really low level combat power Pokemon, because at first glance, it looks like their heart is still really full, even though they're like combat power 12 or something silly like that. So sometimes I do depend on that. Oh good, I got a heart from Honest Bee by G. By Grace. Um, I think we should do one. But yeah, let us know if I, although that kind of defeats the purpose if we <laughs> if we do a who's that Pokemon and you guys tell us what Pokemon you want. Although I do have a few in mind because if you have been suggested to us in the past and I haven't forgotten, uh, I uh, just, yeah, distracted. And so yeah, hopefully we should do that. Um, this week, what is this week's video? Oh yeah, this week's video is a, another Pokemon animal comparison. It was actually done uh, because of my friend Pierre from Shine Science, who we did a live stream together a few weeks ago with our buddy Dylan, the biologist. So I encourage you guys check out their stuff if you are keen, because Pierre does a lot of amazing work for science communicators. Dylan, the biologist, he is working on um, some research on frogs, which is fascinating. He's a really fantastic science communicator as well and shares his insight. He's actually back in my old stomping grounds of San Diego, which is uh, ironic. But, uh, but yeah, so this one's an honor for them because it's one of their favorite Pokemon and it's real life animal counterparts. So not looking at really like I've done in the past where I compare maybe a biological concept to them, but it's a direct species to Pokemon comparative video. And it's probably a species that you haven't heard of, but you've heard of what family they are in. I'm trying to like be subtle with the hens, but it's not working. But it's a really cool species and I uh, can't wait for you guys to see it. So that's on Friday and uh, I can't think of anything else that's going on this week. Oh yeah, on Friday, I'm also on Instagram with my friend Sean from Whatever the Weather Animals. We're gonna be doing a quick Instagram live over there, just having a Q and A catch up, things like that. She's a incredible animal. There's a lot of um, black third monitor lizard. She has adorable dogs. She's got a whole zoo herself, but yeah, we're just gonna have a quick little chat over on Instagram and uh, see how everybody's getting on. So that'll be exciting. And then yeah, Friday night, the video comes out. So yeah, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight, especially the birthday girl. Cheers to the birthday girl, Alice. And uh, hope you enjoyed looking at sloths or sloths, as I know you say. They're one of your favorite, favorite friends. Um, it's a lot of fun to read some sloth research and hope you guys will be prepared going into this slow discovery event on Pokemon Go. Again, be sure to tag me or let me know if you catch any shinies. I'd be keen to see because, yes, yeah, shiny luck for everybody to get that sparkle. And, uh, yeah, I'll hopefully see you guys later around and definitely see you on Friday for this week's video. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good rest of the night. Have a good day. Good evening, wherever you're at. And, uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. Bye.